Yo, what is up guys? This is Rise and welcome to a, another video. Today's a Sylph Sunday for you where we are going to be featuring a tournament run from the number one ranked player on Sylph from last season. He was number one in the world on Sylph after the first month of this season. See Leonardo77. He's been on the channel before and we're going to see how a very high level player approaches some of his games in Sylph. So this was the Nyad Cup meta. And uh, some of the common picks you'll see include Altaria, Greedent, Deoxys, Defense Form, Galvantula, and Shadow Caesar. A lot of those strong picks on C. C. Leonardo's team. He's also going with the Quagsire, more of a unique pick. I ran it on one of my teams as well. It's fairly safe in the meta. Quagsire with great charge move pressure, but um, not much fast move pressure. And it's going to be a six rounder. So without further ado, here we go. Once again, Sylph, you play three games against each opponent. It's a best of three, but you play three games no matter what. And here we go. First opponent is uh, Yido. And um, <clears throat> immediately you see some spice. Galarian Rapidash is on the field. And you see they uh, actually registered it as a Galarian Ponita. So a silly mistake there. Yido, Yido perhaps like a newer trainer to Sylph. Um, and in these first rounds, it's usually the number one ranked person against like I think someone in the middle. Of the rankings um and you know I, i've done the same thing actually you know it's funny i actually had a story where i registered the wrong pokemon in a tournament and i had like literally got invited to it last second and i was like okay i'll just register quick and join and i, did, I guess i didn't double check my team and then i realized i had registered like the wrong version of a pokemon and i messaged like the the to and the in the discord chat like hey guys is it all right? I, I I literally just joined here last second. I meant to register this instead of this. Everybody was cool with it. Oh, what a catch from C. Leonardo. Is this a dynamic punch? Oh, Scald. Okay. I guess that's still fine. And, uh, and um, <laughs> everybody was cool with it. Except for like one person got all fed up as that ice punch really stings. One person got all fed up and they were like, the only reason Rise gets away with this is because he's a content creator. This is privilege. So, whatever. I don't know, man. Random story. The Kainter's running Waterfall. That's surprising. I don't think that's the play for Yido. Um, as Greedent. Just looking super cute. But don't be fooled by its cuteness. It is a strong Pokemon. And uh, you also notice that Tackle is the preferred moveset on Greedent in this meta. I think I played a few people running Bullet Seed. But I think Tackle is the way to go. That Stab, neutral damage against a lot of things. And here we go. Game number two after a confident game one win. Leads into the Ledian. Going to meet the Sea King with the Greedent. And with Sea King not having Stab moves, I would think this is comfortable for Greedent. Just because Greedent's like hitting for that strong Stab Tackle, that Stab Body Slam. Versus Sea King's moves just aren't quite as hard hitting. It just appears to be a pretty comfortable matchup here for for Greedent. Is C. Lenar going to shield for Switch? No, he's going to let it go. And he's going to say, alright, if you want Switch, you're going to have to go down both shields. Because if Galvantula gets lined up against Ledium, that's fine. Undercharges. Doesn't want Switch. Wants to farm down with Galv? Or Altaria? Wants to farm down with Galv. Because if you look at Yido's team, there really isn't a great Galv answer. Goes for the catch. Ledian going to throw a move anyway. Let's see what this is. Aerial Ace. Not going to do that much. In comes Victini. And yeah, if uh, if Yido doesn't bring the Galarian Rapidash, there's just not a whole lot um, that's going to beat this Altaria. Honestly, like Polyrath is probably the best answer. Or I guess Seeking, actually, with Icy Wind. And at this point, you could just let this go if you want. And... Close this out with Galv. Get a big Volt Switch down. Yeah, oh my god. Massive Volt Switch down. You have to shield, of course. And you've already got two discharges back-to-back -back for the Ledian. And uh, all shields are gone. Yo! See, Leo, why are you going over 100 energy, bro? <laughs> Just messing. Uh, and you see how bulky Ledian is, actually. Tanks the discharge. Wow. But pretty comfortable there. And uh, game number three here. And... After this round, I'm sure we'll see um, some more meta teams and some uh, some slightly more competitive games. 
But if there was a spice score, Ito is certainly winning the spice score battle right here. Very unique team. As uh, we've got Galv against Victini. Gonna let the Galv go. Knowing that it's gonna debuff Victini and then just completely farm it down. Wow. It's pretty bold. This is only a V-Create, right? Or is this like a Psychic? It's a Psychic, okay. I always seem to miscount Victini. It gets there so like quicker than I expect. Oh boy. Like, so Polly would do okay here if it was even shields, but Altaria just has such a big energy lead. This is bad news. Catches the Ice Punch like a savage. And uh, one thing you'll notice, like, I don't know. Not to sound like... I, <laughs> I never know how to phrase this. Not to be like as a, as a top player, but like one thing you'll notice from the top players is um, that it... Against, like, newer, ex lesser experienced players, it, it's quite easy to make catches sometimes. Like, people tend to throw their moves just right away every time, especially in situations where um, where it's, like, an oppressive matchup, right? Like, Altaria versus Polyrath. Like, they want to get off that Ice Punch while these Dragon Breaths are chunking them. People tend to throw their moves right away pretty often, and it makes it pretty easy to catch. So I do recommend maybe over-farming, not always throwing your moves right away. And here we are in round two. And we're going to get to see Caesar make its debut against this opponent. Um, and you also see, like, the rankings I have of the, on these player graphics. So, uh, Caesar isn't legend yet this season, but that's a screenshot from his profile last season where he was the uh, he was the number one ranked player in the Sylph regular season. And I really enjoyed Caesar in this tournament. I didn't run it at first, and I saw other people running it. And I was like, you know what? It's actually very safe in this meta. Um, so I started running it myself and had a lot of success with it. Honestly, it was probably my MVP for the Nyad month, I would say. And Caesar is also one of my favorite Pokemon, so it was a lot of fun to run. That's also why I like doing Sylph tournaments, right? A lot of people these days, they're complaining about the Open Great League meta, and rightfully so. I mean, it's pretty stale. This is bad. Uh, C. Leo got a little bit greedy there, thought he could bullet punch down, but now he's down a shield and lost switch advantage. So this is going to be tough to come back from. The only way I can see him winning this is the jelly doesn't have ice beam. If it doesn't have ice beam, his Greedent is slightly ahead here. So his Greedent should be able to win this matchup or force the final shield. Um, if the jelly doesn't have ice Ice Beam, this is still winnable. And I wouldn't think it's running Ice Beam, but maybe. I never ran Jelly myself in this meta, so I would think Bubble Beam Shadow Ball is the way to go. That's what it usually is before Surf. Okay, so, uh, oh. Takes it out, but now it's just you're down a shield here, and yeah, Jelly can simply just get to two Shadow Balls. Oh, and it has Ice Beam, yikes. So that is game over. So, after a very comfortable round one sweep, see Leonardo with a little bit of a reality check. Opponent takes the Moonblast and uh, is going to hex down the Greedent. So, goes down game one against San 4. Let's see if he can come back in these latter two games. Neutral matchup here, Altaria versus Greedent. With Tackle, this is actually quite neutral. Um... If it was Bullet Seed Greedent, I would think Altaria probably has the upper hand in that matchup. Caesar waving high with the Claw. Gonna actually shield, and it's a bait with a Body Slam. So a nice bait from Sand 4. See Leo gonna go for a bait himself with the Night Slash? No shield. Wow. But gets the boost! And this is where Caesar is so deadly. If you look at the opponent's team, what is the check to the Caesar, man? Like, Buzzswole, that's probably the only decent check. Nothing else is going to want to eat this damage. In comes Altaria. And going for the Night Slash. I like this. Might grab a shield if they think it could be an Iron Head. And gets the shield. And now you're going to get to another Night Slash. And you could even hard swap here if you feel like it. Or the safer play is probably just let it go down. Yes, yeah, the safer play because it could be a, a Buzz Swole. And probably not. He probably would have come in with the Buzz Swole on the swap. But who knows. So yeah, this is the, probably the safest play. Use green to soak up this damage. And uh, 
then you're going to have a two-on-one fast break in the end game. Like LeBron James and D. Wade. Who's who in this situation? Is Greedent LeBron? Or is Altaria LeBron? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. But uh, this looks pretty good. Huh. Surprised he didn't just instantly throw. I guess Ice Beam doesn't quite one-shot. Okay, that makes sense. Ice Beam doesn't quite one-shot, so he wasn't concerned about going down. Yeah, doesn't quite one-shot. Um, Hopefully, Green wins CMP here. Oh, God. But Ice Beam, it might live. Ice Beam. Oh, Green, you bulky boy. Green, so cute, so cuddly. And crunches the jelly with only a couple HP, man. That was like 2 HP, Greedent. Altaria versus Altaria in a decisive game three. Here we go. Dragon Breath away. And, wow, they actually throw CMP on the Sky Attack. Gonna take it knowing that it's just a Sky Attack and can survive. And this is always so tricky because, like... Do you run the risk of losing Switch here? Do you, like... Go into Caesar and try and snipe. Wind switch. IVs matter. Gets farmed down by Dugong, but this is. Comes in Gao. This is actually surprising to me. Maybe he's trying to make a prediction as to what's in back. I would think Caesar would be a little more comfortable here because, yeah, Gal has to shield. Going for the discharge. Hopefully, this KOs if it goes unshielded. It does KO, and that's just game. That's just game. When you can debuff the last Pokemon like this, and he's going to be able to do it twice, I think. Oh, no, he's just going to swap Caesar. That makes sense, too. That's probably safer. Because Green, Green would have slightly outpaced to that next move. Swaps the Caesar. Honestly, can shield, can no shield. I mean, either makes sense. After the debuff, yeah, you're going to live this crunch, so... I guess the no shield makes sense because um, there's the potential for debuff. Greedent. Oh, Caesar gets there the last second. That could have been a little bit uncomfortable if uh, Greedent had gotten that tackle down. Because Galv was approaching body slam range. Um, but I think would have been able to shield and outpace before Greedent got to another. So that is a round two victory for C. Leo, And he moves on to round number three. Against Mangaloos. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, bro. But any unique picks? We see the Kamo O and the Celio. Um, how do they look? Kamo's pretty, pretty solid, pretty neutral against the whole team. Hard check to that Galv. Celio doesn't look great, if I'm being honest. It's really only good against Altaria, and it might lose to everything else. Um, so yeah, Celio doesn't look too good. So, yeah, C. Leonardo, right? Recognizing Celio is not too good. He's just going to lead that Altaria. And Altaria is quite strong or neutral against most of the team. So, you see this matchup quite a bit in this Nyad Cup between Altaria and Greedent because they're two of the safest picks, two of the strongest picks. Body Slam coming through. Chunkin. Going to take 30 turns for Altaria to get to two Sky Attacks. You're going to get to two Sky Attacks before... Green can get to um, three body slams. A perfect overfarm there from C. Leo. Sky attack going through. Might get farmed down here, but it's farmed down by an Altaria, so it's like not that much energy. It's only a few dragon breaths. Comes in with Caesar, resisting these dragon breaths. Kind of have to shield this, in my opinion. C. Leo was thinking about it, though. He's like, maybe I'll just take shield advantage. Farming up a lot, going for the Night Slash. I think this is the safer play. Because you probably only need about two Night Slashes, yeah, to knock out. So even if they call it, it's not as much energy wasted as an Iron Head. Iron Head would be kind of like high risk, high reward type play. What's in back, it's his own Caesar. So should get a shield here. And then we'll swap. And you probably need to take the first Night Slash, right? You probably need to take this first one. Because there is the potential of a boost. And now you simply can double Psycho Boost. Oh, throws the Rock Slide. Okay, so confident 
that he can rock slide and then psycho boost before Caesar gets to a third. Oh, okay. Going for the rock. This is going to be close. This is going to be tight. Is Caesar only like two or three away? Okay, no. Yeah. <laughs> okay, no, yeah. What does that even mean? Nicely played. When I used to uh, intern with the Milwaukee Bucks, um, one joke with uh, in the press conferences with the Milwaukee Bucks coach, Mike Boonholzer, is that's what he always says in interview questions during the press conference. He's like, yeah, no. Um, that's how he starts every question. Mike, how did you feel like Giannis played tonight? Yeah, no, um, Giannis is great. We see the immediate swap and just see how free the Caesar is. Like, see, Leo has no reservations of just safe swapping the Caesar against this team. Um, boom, lands the Iron Head through two shields. And look at all this energy. Caesar's going to double up and get off two Night Slashes here against DD. This is terrific. This, oh, actually doesn't. Wasn't quite there yet. My mistake. I think you come in with DD here to soak this up. Yep. In comes their Caesar. I love this play. Psycho boost and then dip into green. And although green doesn't do great against Caesar, um, I mean, it's going to be a lot bulkier than Caesar. So these are going to add up. And honestly, you could go straight body slam, in my opinion. Go straight body slam here. Iron Head is going to hurt. Yeah, see Leo going straight for the body slam. This is where, like, I think some other players might mess up. They might feel like they need to go for the crunch. Um, but Body Slam would do so much against this glassy Caesar. I think you let this go. Counter down shield. Let's see. Oh, gets the boost. That's tough. Half the shield, of course. And then the opposing DD is still lurking in the back. With energy, right? So this is going to be close. I wonder if, like, double... S no, I don't think double Psycho Boost is enough. I think you have to Rock Slide. Maybe double Psycho Boost is the play... Go for the rock slide instead. This is CMP. I don't think this is quite enough. Oh, no. Is this a psycho boost, though? He lives a psycho boost. It is a psycho boost. One extra counter. And gets it off. Oh, my gosh. Wow. You know, I wonder if the opponent could have committed to the rock slide there. Because they got to a psycho boost. They were only two away. Would have been real close. Um, Altaria versus Kamo'o. I still don't know how to pronounce Kamo. I say Kamo'o. I've heard people say Kamo'o. Some people just say like Kamo. But I'm going to win the zero shield. And I like this switch out. Um, if you give that Altaria just a free farm down, I think this becomes a lot more uncomfortable. So... As we see, Celio just totally freely swapping the Caesar. In comes the opposing Caesar. And uh, gonna get off. Oh, gets the boost. Gets the boost. Now the opposing Caesar probably has to shield this. The problem is, it is getting a. Oh, CMP. That's best case scenario. Wow. If that Caesar didn't throw, might have been able to bullet punch down. And come out with a ton of energy for Didi. But now this is looking pretty good. He's going to catch now. That'd be a little too risky. Going to shield. You can't quite farm all the way down. And we see the catch of course. After like three extra counters. But you had to rock slide this anyway. And now you just build up to double psycho boost I think. Oh goes for the catch. Nasty. Nasty, nasty. Undercharge from the opponent. Both of them stop tapping. Look at these plays, dude. Neither of them want to take out each other. He doesn't want to give the Caesar um, extra farm to potentially get to that Night Slash. He has the Rock Slide loaded on DD. This is craziness. The two birds just staring down at one another. It's a staring contest. Caesar comes in, gets the bullet punch. Does Caesar have a move? It does have a move. Oh my gosh. What an incredible play by uh, by Mang, the opponent. Wow. Be honest, comments. Be honest. How many of you would have saw that win con as we see a tough lead here for C. Leo? Is this the decisive game three? I'm losing track. Let's go with it. 
Oh, catches, but it's a night slash on Jellison, so not the not the catch you wanted, in my opinion. Oh man. Oh wow. Went for the potential shadow ball catch. But it's a double nuke jelly, so I guess they were just gonna be extra patient. Um Reading can take these ice beams. No problem. I feel like you could potentially have just thrown your Night Slash before with the Caesar to either get a shield or knock out, but this is fine. Oh, wow. Jelly Shielding? That's surprising. In comes Altaria, and all that energy he has banked on Caesar, I think is going to be really valuable here. Gonna even get to another Body Slam, and you could even combo play here with your Caesar. Is he gonna? No, he's gonna let it go down. He doesn't want to switch lock himself, I guess. But I think you just throw your move on Caesar here. Right? Am I tripping? Okay, see, Leo sees it differently. I think he got denied there. That's unfortunate. Going for the farm down. And what's gonna come in to greet? Altaria, it's the jelly. You gotta respect this. You've already seen Ice Beam. But the thing is, Je um, Altaria is so convincing here against Buzzwell. This is going to be really tough for Buzzwell to overcome. Yeah, it has to lunge because it doesn't want to debuff itself. And it has to shield the Sky Attack. It's double super effective. So you simply get the shield of Sky Attack. And then you can combo Iron Head. Or you just stay in. Yeah, I guess that's fine too. I guess you don't want to run the risk of like transferring a counter and the counter KOs. I think Caesar would live one counter. But that's fine. Sky attack. Swap the Seas Meister. And he's going to Night Slash for the victory. Don't you dare unnecessary boost, Caesar. Thank you. Thank you. See, Leo, if you're watching this, I always get the unnecessary boost. It's every time. It's 100%. When my Night Slash is going to KO something, I get the boost. Um, Wait, sorry. Let's see. So Caesar takes out the jelly there. Was this... The, okay, so this is the next round. Mind Master. Good catch, Rise. Thanks, guys. Mind Master round four. He's rocking a mill tank, a dugong, and a Mew. Mew is also fairly common in this meta. Um, C. Leo electing not to run it. I ran it in my first tournament. And then I kind of went away from it. Because I just... I don't know. It was like safe, but also I didn't feel like it was uh, consistent, right? It was very like bait dependent in a lot of matchups. And also there's a Greedent or a normal type on most teams, which um, is pretty tough if your Mew gets a line there. Going for the Iron Head after getting a shield. I like this play. Iron Head. Ooh. Oh, I'm tripping. Sorry. He didn't get a shield. Now, will he get both shields? No. He gets off two Iron Heads, takes out Altaria, gets Switch, and now he gets to line up his Greedent against this Jelly. This is where Greedent wants to be. With Tackle, it's not as convincing because your fast moves aren't really doing anything. But um, it's still nice because, as you see, Ice Beam doesn't do that much. It three shots you. You need three Ice Beams if you're Jelly, and the Crunch does a lot more. And this is just game over. Just such a dominant matchup here for Altaria. No need to shield anything. I was a huge fan of Buzzwool myself because it beat pretty much everything but Alt. Well, that's a lie. But it had play against everything but Altaria um, and Jelly. So there were a lot of teams where, like, if you just kind of ganged up on the Altaria as best as possible and had Buzzwool in back, you were golden. It's a pretty solid meta. Moonblast coming through. Bang. And gonna swap greedy to uh, not get too greedy. And give the jelly a huge farm down. Going for the crunch. Uh-oh. But still has a shield. So should be fine. That was tons of energy on that jelly. Crunch coming through. And this is going to knock out the Jellymeister. 
And here we go. Next game, Galv making an appearance and catches the buzzle in the lead. Nice lead for Galv here. Going to resist the counter damage. But Buzzwool is uh, is so strong that it, it can definitely make this uncomfortable for Galf. Shields the discharge. Like Lunge would, would just one shot from here from, uh, from Buzzwool. So you kind of have to shield in my opinion. Just going to go for the discharge. They catch an Altaria. I guess that's fine. And lands it. Comes in with Caesar. Going to save the Altaria. Which is a little concerning. Because with a Buzzwill lead, you'd think he has an Altaria check in back. Perhaps the Jelly? Wow, builds up to max energy. That's like 100 energy. And goes for the Night Slash. Tons of energy. You're only one Bullet Punch off double Night Slash here. And it's the Dugong. Okay, so... So... It was the Altaria counter in back. But he did get switch. So he can align his Galv here with the Dugong. The thing is, he's down a shield. So this is kind of tough. He's shieldless. Yeah. Oh, they switch. Is this possible? Can you Dragon Breath down? And get to double sky attack? I don't think so. Because I think, yeah, Buzzwall gets to a move. And this will definitely put Altaria into Icy Wind range. So this is over. This is over. Nicely played by Mind Master. Reading the mind of C. Leonardo. Yeah, I think needed to greet the Altaria with his own Altaria there. Had to uh, had to big brain the opponent. Wait, I'm tripping. Is this the next opponent already? Why am I quirky almost start? Bro, I can't keep up. So I guess he won 2-1 against uh, Mind Master. And now we got round number five. What a name it that is, by the way. Quirky Omastar. Have you ever heard an IGN... That cool. I don't know. Correctly shields the crunch, which is pretty nice. Sees are going for the night slash. Going for another one. People like to call the night slash, it seems. Green actually going to shield that one to get to this another move. Do you bother shielding? You do. And you probably get the shield back with all this energy, right? Probably get the shield back anyway. In comes Wormadam. And this is going to be a tough bug bite down for Wormadam, to be honest. Like, Caesar might get to two more Night Slashes here. Another Night Slash coming through. Oh, wow. Gets a shield and swaps. And this is looking really comfortable at this point. Because this is a neutral matchup here. This will be close. You can clean it up with Caesar if need be. And then... Uh, Quagsire is just simply going to Earthquake the Wormadam. And Quag's bulky enough where it can tank a bug, a tank a bug buzz. Body Slam coming through. Altaria should get to another Sky Attack here. Yeah, I think you simply just come in right away with Caesar. And then you swap when they if they swap. That was like if dude if he meant to if he meant to wait that exact amount so the opponent couldn't get out like <laughs> that's actually ridiculous like the exact amount where he could farm down they couldn't get out and he also wouldn't be locked in if he like knew the timer there that's insane I guess I I guess could have been looking at it like beforehand so uh so I can see that Altaria mirror match Hello, my friend Altaria. Good to see you, Altaria. Go for the sky attack right away. Seems like he likes to do this. If the opponent builds up to Moonblast, will he shield? Let's see. Will he shield this? Let's it go. And then swaps to avoid the farm down. 
kind of has to shield. But once again, we've just seen over and over again how deadly Caesar is with this energy lead. And in comes the Wormadam. This is not a Caesar answer. This is going to be really uncomfortable for the Wormadam to deal with. That looked like it might have been CMP. Night Slash coming through. Lands. Um, wasn't CMP. But Wormadam throws the move immediately. And we see a shield. I think we can bullet punch down here. Nasty, dude. Nasty. This is looking really good for C. Leo. All this energy still has a fully healthy Greedent. And yeah, you just spam Night Slashes here. I think this is the play. The Altaria is low enough, right, where it's not getting to a move. If I remember correctly. Lands two Night Slashes, swaps Greedon. At this point, fast moves is all you need. No reason to even throw a charge move here. They go for the Crunch for a potential debuff. I guess that makes sense. Does he get the farm down here? Ooh. Throwing to make sure that he at least gets a shield. Um. And Greedon just not quite enough in the tank from the opposing Greedon. To get to that body slam. And here we go. Game three against Quirky. Almost our Mantine lead. Not great for Altaria. This is a bit of a core breaker to be honest. Bit of a core breaker. Oh, but catches the ice beam. Finding some like clever plays here. Oh, it's a, uh, it's a bubble beam bait. Okay. So this looks pretty favorable at the moment. For Quirky Omastar. Because with the debuff. Worm should probably win this matchup. And then um, the Mantine is going to be tricky for the back line to deal with. But Celio does have that... Does have that um, energy banked on Altaria. And I'd expect him to come in right away here against Worm when he goes down with his Altaria. Because he's going to be able to get some nice farm here. Yeah, Altaria tanks this no problem. You got to save the shields. And if, if Quirky lets himself get farmed here, this is kind of bad news. Another move. Just going to take it, I think. Going to shield to preserve some health. Doesn't want to put himself too low. Okay, opposing Altaria. So you know, Moonblast and Dip, I would presume. Moonblast. And gets the shield. That's actually good for C. Leo, I think. Because if they just put it all on Mantine, I think they just sweep with Mantine. But now, with bubble beams, this is not very comfortable for Mantis. You could argue maybe should have ice beamed. And this Caesar is going to do a good job getting this Mantine low. But this is still... Ah, this is still dicey. Yeah, you kind of have to shield because your Altaria is so low. It just faints to Dragon Breath. So, this is dicey. You have to like... Oh, man. And after the bubble beams, it just does nothing. Yeah, I think at this point, the opponent just saves the shield for Altaria and Dragon Breath's everything down. Yeah. Well played by Quirky Omastar. Still in that game three and avoiding getting swept. And here we go. The finals against Mr. Big Green, a trainer I know who is very experienced, former Sylph legend, and uh, plays a lot of battles. Just a high-volume battler, very experienced and we've got the Altaria Mirror. Start things out. Going for the Sky Attack right away. Sky Attack lands. Big Green building up to Moonblast. Will he go for the Moonblast? Let's see. And he does. Lands the Moonblast. And doesn't allow himself to get farmed. I like this by Big Green. If you allow yourself to get farmed, I think that's bad news. Shields the Night Slash. Honestly, maybe you just play out the two shields here. Because if you let this go, if you let your Caesar go, like... I think you shield this if you're big green. Let's see what he does. He shields. Do we see a shield from this Caesar? We do. Oh, boost. So this will knock out, of course... And then what's in the back? Oh, it gets his own boost. Comes in Altaria. 
and it's DD versus DD, but this, <laughs> but see Leo's DD is um is ahead by a move, a complete mirror team, a complete mirror team here. Pretty wild, and that just shows you how much this meta is about like energy. Oh, and Big Green's also running Thunderbolt, which is bad for him because Rock Slide, you're going to get to these Rock Slides quicker than Thunderbolt. Rock Slide coming through. Should be another Thunderbolt here. So this is still kind of awk. Is that Altaria still there? Yeah, the Altaria's there with like a sliver of health. Goes for the Psycho Boost and you just stay in because you live a Dragon Breath. So you get the counter through. Oh, Oh, it's a tie. Wait, what? Wait a sec. It's a tie. Oh my gosh. Holy cow. There's only three minutes left in the footage. So I don't know if the full set is here. Wait, was that a tie? That was a tie, right? Let's look at this. Throws the Psycho Boost. Swaps, okay. So he swapped out to clear his debuff. Did he take a dragon? I think he took I think he took a dragon breath there. I think he took a dragon breath there. But I think he still had to. Because the counter didn't KO. Oh my god. I don't think the counter would have KO'd if uh that was a weird endgame. That was uh that was complex. Anyway. Game two, which is actually game one, because of the tie. Night Slash coming through. We still haven't seen who wins CMP, because in the last game, Big Green um, was behind a bullet punch. Another Night Slash. This, so this was CMP, so it looks like Celio does win CMP. We're going to see the shield. Oh, and a boost. Do you shield, though? No shield. I kind of like it. Because... Oh, and he gets the boot. What is going on, dude? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Shield once. Farm down. It's just a Night Slash. Gonna let it go through. Wow. And put it all on DD. Plus, you have this Moon Blast. It's uh, Wall Rain. Okay. Can DD sweep there? It's maybe his own DD and back. It's Altaria, and this is where Rock Slide is going to pay dividends, and DD should be able to sweep here because you can two shot Altaria with Rock Slide. Thunderbolt doesn't quite two shot. Oh man, this was CMP. I think Big Green got a little greedy there with the over farm. He was in a bad spot either way, but if he throws that. Sky attack immediately. I think maybe he has a chance. Probably probably still was over anyway. Altaria mirror match. Here we go. And this is the last battle, I'm pretty sure, of the video. So for the championship. Win or go home. They're probably already at home. They're probably playing at home. But mentally, win or go home. <laughs> Sky attack lands. Will we see the moon blast again from Big Green? Will we see the no shield again? Same way as game one. Okay. This time greets the Caesar with Hakamo and catches a dragon claw here. Oh, it's a brick break actually. What a catch. What a catch. That's right. I forgot the uh, the dragon claw brick break standard moveset. And that catch is pretty massive, man. Because Brick Break's a bad move to begin with. And resist it. That's just going to do nothing. You still have that energy on Caesar Bank. This is looking really good. This is looking really good for C. Leo. Comes with the Altaria to force DD to expend some energy here. Does DD like throw a move? Is it his own Caesar? It is. I think DD will reach a psycho boost in the end game if need be. And this is tough because you have to shield this now and he's at two. 
And if you're big green, I think you have to go for, like, the farm down anyway as a win con. So, well played, man. Dancing with energy. And I think this is a good showcase of being, like, very creative and flexible with your gameplay, right? There weren't a lot of situations where it's just, like, win switch or, like, win the lead, line this up with that. Like, a lot of these Pokemon aren't the bulkiest, um, like Caesar mostly and Galvantula. So there's a lot of situations where swap out, avoid the farm down. He was sometimes, especially in open Great League, I think switch advantage is a lot more important than perhaps shield advantage or like energy advantage. Um, and this meta, switch advantage, far less important unless it's like, I guess, Wall Rain versus Altaria. But switch advantage, far less important to worry about as opposed to shield advantage and um, energy advantage. And that was a great showcase from the number one ranked Sylph player, C. Leonardo. As always, very high level stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Comment down below. All comments are appreciated. And all that said, thank you for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.